Welcome to worship with Southport Salvation Army. We're really pleased that you've put a date in your diary to come and join us for worship this morning. It's great that although we're scattered around Southport and probably even further afield, that we can gather on a Sunday morning around our phones, our tablets, our laptops, our PCs and even our TVs to join in worship together. We're also really enjoying the fact that we can interact with you, so if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to be notified when new content is uploaded. Also leave comments on YouTube and also on our Facebook pages. We'd love to hear from you where you are, how you're getting on in life and any other feedback you have. We also want to let you know about a new uh, website that we have set up. It's a one-stop shop for all of our resources. So you can go there and view any of our previous virtual meetings that we've made so far. You can also read our Outlook, which is our newsletter, plus some extra features that we put in there as well, along with some reflections on the Psalms from the Old Testament, and also some Bible studies, some notes to help you get to grips with the Bible, in particular John's Gospel, and also the theme of the cross, exactly what it means and just how massive Jesus going to the cross was. The music that we just heard was called Let Praise Resound, and it's based around Psalm 98, which says this. 
Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and with the sound of singing, with trumpets and with the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Well, I'm afraid we don't have any ram's horns this morning, but we are going to shout for joy to the Lord. And I'm going to invite you to join with me as we sing the song, He is the Lord and he reigns on high. And in that song, we're reminded that God's gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, his love, his kingdom, his influence upon the world is the hope of our nation. So we're going to sing that song. And then after that, I invite you to sit back and listen to a beautiful song entitled, For This I Have Jesus. It reminds us that whatever the circumstances of life, we have Jesus to be with us, to help us, to be our Lord and our guide.
had seemed unanswered yet. For this I have Jesus, for this I have Jesus, for this I have Jesus, I have Dear Lord, we've started our time together by reflecting on your greatness. We've joined with the writer of Psalm 98 by singing about your greatness. We've invited you to send your power into the world and we've confessed our need for you in every situation of life, in our joys, in our sorrows, in the best and in the worst of times. But we don't just want to sing about you. We don't just want to give you a wish list of prayers. We want to take a step of faith today and invite you to change us. So Heavenly Father, on behalf of everyone who's joined us today, I invite you to make a difference in our lives. I ask that something in this meeting will challenge every one of us so that we will each live differently this time tomorrow because we met in this way today. I ask that you might include us in what you're doing in sharing the virus of love in the world right now. Will you present us with opportunities, however small, to show in our lives what it means to have a God who is not only full of majesty, but also full of love for every person in Southport and beyond. Help us to pray boldly. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, right here, right now, as it is in heaven. And I make this prayer in your name. Amen. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to give you an update on where we are with Thy Kingdom Come, the prayer initiative that we're going to follow from the 21st to the 31st of May. Um, so good news is we've got prayer slots taken on every single day so far. So that's really good. Uh, thank you so much for everybody who's already signed up and already joined the, uh, the prayer wave that we've got going there. It would appear that we are early birds rather than anything else. Um, morning slots are filling up very nicely. Afternoon slots is where we've got more of a gap. So if you want to take an afternoon slot, the link will be posted. It's in the Outlook. You can email myself, Alison or Michael. You can get in touch with us through uh, Instant Messenger on the, the Facebook, through the core group. However is easiest for you, we will find a way to make sure you get on your uh, prayer slot. So just get in touch and we'll help facilitate that for you. 
Um, we've got the first of our collaborative slots fixed. So 10 o'clock every morning. So that's every day from the 10, 21st to the 31st. 10 o'clock, we're going to have prayer Zoom. So that's a, a Zoom meeting where everybody can come together. Somebody will help uh, lead through the prayer thought for the day, the reading that we've got, uh, and, and will lead us through it just you know, expressing that prayer together as a collaborative community. So if you'd like to pray with other people, let us know. We'll we'll put out the details for that on the core site, but also you can email us and let us know. We will add you to that list and we'll we'll distribute those details when the time comes. Um if you've already signed up and you'd like to sign up for some more, just use the link again. You'll be able to sign up for more slots. If you haven't signed up yet, as I say, use the link, email us, get in touch. It really doesn't matter. We'll find a way to link you through this. And we'll be sharing some more updates on the core group in Facebook um, in the coming week. So keep an eye out on those and we'll share uh, more of an update in next week's Outlook as well. So again, thank you very much for everybody who's signed up already. It's really, really uplifting to see the, the people who want to get involved. If you haven't, get involved and hopefully we can have a really good week next week and the week after in prayer. Thanks very much. Bye. Shall be shouts of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior above. There shall be shouts of blessing, precious reviving.
Psalm 139 O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light becomes night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God! Away from me, you bloodthirsty men! They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Where can I go? 
2013, a teenager from the USA dropped a few bottles containing messages into the ocean. Three years later, to his surprise, the teenager received a letter from the finder of one of the bottles, which had been reeled in by a fisherman in Spain. She studied the maps of ocean currents and discovered that her message had travelled roughly 3,000 miles. When interviewed, the girl said, at first I was really surprised, wow! all the way from Spain. But when I looked at the ocean currents, it made sense that it went that way. This morning, we are continuing our look at prayer. And I'm really pleased to say that fortunately, our prayers are not dependent upon favorable ocean currents to reach their destination and receive an answer. We can be confident that our heartfelt prayers will reach the throne of God and he will always answer one way or another. But this morning I want to talk about a particular type of prayer. If we think about it, there are lots of different types of prayer. Mealtime prayers, brief and to the point. Thank you God for food that's yummy, that makes me strong and fills my tummy. Then there's bedtime prayers. Dear God, thank you for my family, my pets, my comfy bed. Please help so-and-so to get better. Please look after so-and-so at this particular time, and so on. And then there's church prayers, proper, 
sometimes pre-written, thought out, sometimes a bit more formal. Devotional prayers, less refined, more honest, perhaps. Recited prayers, prayers that have been prepared by someone else and then you repeat them. Crisis prayers, rough and ready, desperate, spur of the moment, God, please help me, kind of prayer. And then there's conversational prayers, the ongoing prayers that you might perhaps make during the day, and so on. But I wonder, do these prayers ever challenge us? Maybe, sometimes, but I suspect that often prayer can roll off the tongue, perhaps a little easily, and it soon becomes mundane and not particularly challenging. And maybe we find ourselves in a bit of a prayer rut. Well, this morning I've got two images in my mind, a supermarket and a battlefield. And I wonder whether prayer can sometimes feel a little bit more like a walk around a supermarket with a shopping list, rather than a call to stand firm on a battlefield ready to fight for the kingdom of God. Sometimes our default prayer style is supermarket style. It's safe, low risk. You go in, you do what you need to do, you get what you want out of it, and then you leave. And I'm not saying that that is wrong, but I think if we are going to grow, if we are going to be challenged, if we are going to have an authentic, strong and unswerving faith, if we want a relationship with God where we can partner with him in the real business of serving and saving our world, we also need to be prepared to pray dangerous prayers, battlefield prayers. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. But before we look at what dangerous prayer is, let's think about what it's not. Firstly, dangerous prayers are not just about the words that we pray. I think if we really meant half of the words that we said in our prayers or sung in our songs, our lives and our world would be hugely different places. Last week we sang the Wren Collective song, Build Your Kingdom Here. A number of people commented on this song, so I'll give you an example from it. One of the lines says, Holy Spirit, come invade us now. And then it goes on to say, we lay down our lives for heaven's cause. How many times have we perhaps sung those words? What would the impact be if we truly, 100% live by these words? There's hundreds of examples I could give you. If you have a Salvation Army songbook with you at home, or, or any hymn book from any church probably, look at some of the words that you have sung over the years and ask yourself if they are just simply words that we sing or whether they are real prayers from the heart. Because dangerous prayers aren't just about the words. Secondly, prayers that are dangerous are, are not all about our needs. God, give us health, give us food, keep us safe, help me get a job, protect my family, help me to sleep. All reasonable prayers, and I regularly pray for many of these things. But if that's all we focus on, our prayers become very one-dimensional and safe. This is what one person said about dangerous prayers. When we enter the realm of dangerous prayers, we are asking God to work a transformation in us. Our focus is not on what we gain, but on his presence working in our lives. Dangerous prayers stand out. And there's so much that I could say on this, but today I just want to share a really short but really dangerous prayer found in Psalm 139. There's two verses, verses 23 to 24, that I want to look at. If you were to pray these verses, this dangerous prayer earnestly, you would be jumping into the deep end of your prayer life. Praying this prayer could be a costly and painful step that makes you very vulnerable it could be the most ultimately rewarding and life-changing thing that you could ever do. When you pray a dangerous prayer, Psalm 139 reveals the kind of requests that you begin to make. In Psalm 139, 
David recognises that God knows everything and made everything. Then it strikes David that God thinks about him all day long. If I were to count your thoughts about me, they would outnumber the grains of sand on the seashores. This is phenomenal and humbling and amazing. God is thinking about you and me right now. David realises that God can see him through and through. There is no hiding. God knows David better than he knows himself. So he takes the risk of asking God to shine his holiness into the darkest corner of his heart. David wants nothing to be hidden from God. And so he prays dangerously. Search me. Investigate my life, says the message translation. Look deep into my heart, says another. But here's a warning. Don't ask God the question if you don't want to hear the answer. If we want God to look deep into our hearts, we need to be ready to accept the findings. Do we want God to identify areas of selfishness, pride, self-centeredness, apathy, and all sorts of other things that we'd really rather keep hidden? Have you ever thought, if people really knew me as I am, they would think very differently about me? With that in mind, I think that maybe it's safer to lead the unexamined life. You know, a life where you keep God at arm's length, where we don't allow his word to probe us, and where we don't make ourselves open to and accountable before God. That's the easy option. When was the last time you prayed the dangerous prayer, search me? What keeps you from praying this way? The second request that we find in David's prayer in Psalm 139 is, Lord, test me. Hold on a moment. I'm not actually sure that I want testing. In Ecclesiastes 3, verse 3, it says, there is a time for everything. There is a time to tear down and there's a time to build up. And in our Psalm, Psalm 139, the words test me are also translated in the message version to cross-examine me. What's the result of this testing or this cross-examination? Well, the, leading, the legal-minded amongst us will know that under cross-examination, you either break or you rise to the occasion. As God looks deep into your heart, he either breaks you so that you can start again, or he stretches you so that you can grow. And to ask God to test you is actually to give him permission to break you. After being a Christian for a while, you will discover that you need to develop a whole series of new patterns in your life. And to do this, you need God's help. You need to invite him to break down those things in, in life that are not pleasing to him. You might need to break away those parts of your life that are holding you back. Those things that are stopping you from leaping and bounding. He may need to break off the stuff that is quenching his Holy Spirit and smothering your joy. We sometimes sing these words, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me, break me, melt me, mould me, fill me. In John 8, we have the story of a woman caught in adultery. But she doesn't face condemnation from Jesus. He simply says, go on your way, but break this pattern of behaviour because it dishonours God and will destroy your life. Likewise, in Luke 19, we have the story of Zacchaeus, another similar example, where Jesus says to him, stop living the way that you have been. Break these behaviours, these traits, these life choices that are not part of who I want you to be. And so I ask and I wonder this morning, what is one area in which you need to ask God to begin tearing down the walls? You know, this may be a bold and controversial thing to say, but within the Salvation Army, we are known to support people who are struggling with addictive habits. But I wonder whether actually we need to break 
our addiction to all that is safe and comfortable. William Booth said that the chief danger of the 20th century, I think we can tag 21st century in there too, is that there will be religion without the Holy Ghost, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, politics without God, salvation without regeneration, and heaven without hell. In other words, there will be comfortable and safe Christianity that makes no demands on individual Christians. And I've had enough of playing it safe. Safety and comfort are dangerous addictions for any congregation. Here's some examples of the symptoms of playing it safe. Agreeing that prayer is a good thing, but not taking it seriously. Listening to what God is saying to us through the Bible, through songs, through prayer, through the message, but choosing not to act upon it in case it makes unreasonable demands on us. Not offering or accepting forgiveness because it is too costly or it dents our pride. I could go on. God is still in the business of breaking us so that he can use us. But we each have to choose. We can take a risk and invite God to break, to change us and to build us back up. Or we can remain as we are. The second part of asking God to test us is that if the test isn't to break us, it's to stretch us. As we grow as followers of Christ, we get to a point where we say, I'm no longer content with the status quo in my life. I'm tired of being in a spiritual rut. And we begin to pray, God, you created me to be dynamic and growing, but I'm stuck. Please stretch me, grow me beyond where I am and to where you want me to be. Do you perhaps feel like you're in a rut? Do you feel like you need to be stretched and to help to grow? If so, beware, because stretching is painful. You might be finding yourself asking the question, is it worth the pain? But it is part of the process of spiritual growth. Maturity does not come easy. It takes real courage to actually invite a time of spiritual stretching, but it is always a life-changing experience. I wonder what is one area in your life in which you need to begin praying for God to stretch you? Finally, the third dangerous prayer in this psalm that we might want to make is this. Lead me. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. The message translation puts it, see for yourself whether I've done anything wrong, then guide me on the road to eternal life. In effect, David's prayer was simply this, God, lead me. Take my life, gifts, talents, resources, energy and future and put it all in your hands and take me forward. Can you identify one area in your life that you have not yet handed over to God? Asked once about the secret of success, William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, replied, I will tell you the secret. God has had all there was of me. There have been men with greater brains than I, men with greater opportunities. But from the day I got the poor of London on my heart and caught a vision of all Jesus Christ could do with them, on that day, I made up my mind that God would have all of William Booth there was. And if there's anything of power in the Salvation Army today, it is because God has had all the adoration of my heart, all the power of my will, and all the influence of my life. Let's bring that back up to date and into our current situation. At this time of economic and social turbulence, businesses, organisations, churches, including the Salvation Army, are having to ask themselves tough questions about what is important. What is our important or our essential business? What or who are we really all about? And as a church, both nationally and locally here in Southport, we are needing to say, God, search us. Lord, 
test us. God, lead us. What about you? If we are committed to grow, to change and to follow Jesus, we need to start praying dangerous prayers. Starting now with six easy words, but with tough implications. Search me. Test me. Lead me. Are you ready for the supermarket or the battlefield? I would like to share with you a creed written by Lynn Hybels. It's entitled Dangerous Women Creed, but I think it applies equally to all of us. Dear God, please make us dangerous people. May we be people who acknowledge our power to change and grow and be radically alive for God. May we be healers of wounds and writers of wrongs. May we weep with those who weep and speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. May we cherish children, embrace the elderly and empower the poor. May we pray deeply and teach wisely. May we be strong and gentle leaders. 
May we sing songs of joy and talk down fear. May we never hesitate to let passion push us, conviction compel us, and righteous anger energize us. May we strike fear into all that is unjust and evil in the world. May we dismantle abusive systems and silence lies with truth. May we shine like stars in a darkened generation. May we overflow with goodness in the name of God and by the power of Jesus. And in the name and by that power, may we change the world. Dear God, please make us dangerous people. Amen. And on that note of commitment, I invite you to make the words about closing music your resolution for these coming days. I dare to be different by living like Christ. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you can join with us this time next week. God bless you.
everyone. Thanks again for joining us today. Uh, we hope that our meeting has left you feeling encouraged, challenged and equipped for the week ahead. And please don't forget, keep on praying those dangerous prayers. They really will change you and the world around you. We just want to let you know that we're going to be posting a, an extra video at 12 o'clock on both YouTube and Facebook. It's an interview with two members of our congregation who are currently serving as nurses in local hospitals. We hope you'll take the opportunity to watch the video, to listen carefully to what they have to say and to commit to praying for them and other nurses and members of the NHS. God bless you.